Okay, very good. Let's uh, call this meeting of the waitlist select board to order. About six so three, I'm guessing, because I can't see the clock part of this computer screen. <laughs> okay. Um, first item of business is meeting minutes. No comment. No comment. Move to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. Let's uh, vote then. Um, all those in favor of approving the meeting minutes from March 14th. Uh, oh, I guess we don't. <gasps> We don't have to do we roll call. To do. <laughs> okay, you may signal by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All right, great. Uh, the vendor and payroll warrants. Uh, are there any no comments problem. on those? No comments. Okay, great. Uh, now it's time for comments from the public related to items not listed on the agenda. And I don't, let's see, I just see Chris, member of the public out on the Zoom. Nat, Amy, you got anything to say? Great job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That was a not a plant. I did not. I'm sorry, sir. Can you tell me your name? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Address? We did have one that was emailed. Oh, um, right. oh do you want to um, uh, put that public comment in the record then? Yeah, I need to. Um, yeah, I remember it had to do with. Oh, I read it twice, too. I guess I need to read them three times Change before. The town clerk. To oh, say, consider yeah. going from um, from elected to appointed. Right. So this was an email from Dan Dennis yeah. from three. Oh well, a few days ago. Yes, it yeah. was for this meeting. Um, I would like to suggest the select board consider the process of appointing the next town yeah. clerk as opposed to an elected person, thus ensuring a qualified individual. Thank yeah. you for your time, Dan Denning. Yeah. Yeah, and and I yeah I know we've talked actually about that in the past that um, between elected and um, an appointed town clerk, and I don't know what the process would be if we wanted to change. I think it's is it, is it in our bylaws, Brian, that um, requires us to have an elected town clerk. I know you can do either, but I don't know what the process is it takes, to change. So it takes so the state law provides the the process for changing. It takes a a uh, favorable vote at a town meeting, followed by a subsequent uh, uh, vote, ballot vote at the oh, next okay. election. At the next election. So it's a oh, two-step okay. process. This is step mm -hmm. process. Oh, okay. Well, is, there, yeah. is there a reason to have it one way or the other? Or is there a reason mm -hmm. we have it uh, elected? Um, there's, there's arguments on both sides. Yeah. The yeah. argument for keeping it elected is that there's independence mm -hmm. in the position. And uh, I mean, it goes that the, the select board doesn't, that's the argument is that the select board doesn't control the town clerk yep. indirectly, right. I guess. Um, so they, people who argue for that feel like there's more independence mm -hmm. in the position. Yeah. Um, and then I think the main argument is, and I think Dan alludes to it, is that, um, you know, finding somebody qualified from a town of 1,600 people is sometimes a challenge. Who wants to run for Who it? Who wants to run for yeah. it? Yeah. Um, Someone who's so. run and is willing to do all the training because yep. I think more so than in the past, you really have to know a lot yep. of state law and regulations and how to run an election and, and all of that. There's a lot of training involved. It's a big commitment. And for an elected position, that seems, I don't know, it's hardly ever been a con I don't know of any contentious town clerk rate races, but I bet there are. There, I think there might have been one in the paper the other day that I had never seen, though, any time before then, any contentious election. So I don't think it's really historically been about like having a contentious election for two people wanting to be town clerk. Um, I think it's more the idea that it could be someday we can't find anybody who's willing to do that job and run for it and also uh, willing to get themselves qualified in terms of education. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas you could have somebody who uh, is full qualified, but happens to live in another town. Mm -hmm. And could you hire that person? Well, no, well, currently we have to hire someone who can be, maybe if someone quit, you might be able to get somebody interim who's not elected, but to get elected, you have to be a resident. You can't uh, yep. be like a resident of Deerfield and be the town clerk of Waitley. Yep. Okay. So, um, I, I, I absolutely, that whole discussion we had a few years back came back to mind. And I remember speaking with Lynn about it at the time we had the conversation. 
and and she said something like, "Well, um, I used to feel strongly that it should be elected, but um, now that she she had been doing it for many many years at that point, she said, I can see an argument for uh, for an appointed town clerk because of the amount of training needed, mm -hmm. and that that's not always going to be available in a person who's in a town and can." I mean, it also has to be a person, not, I mean, anybody probably of, I don't know, I, I, I'm not trying to like insult town clerks, but a, a, any person who can read and write could probably be trained to be the town clerk, right? It's it's a matter of learning. It. You have to do the learning, right? Awesome. Um, but those same people can get jobs doing other things that pay better. So would someone who can do it be willing to do it? Mm -hmm. That's, I don't know. So, uh, at any rate, and that's surely something that we should keep be keeping thinking about. Um, but maybe on too a little too tight of a schedule. Yeah, we probably it, it wouldn't be for this year, but maybe we should keep thinking about it and uh, see how things work out in the next year or two. I don't know. Okay, public comment. I think we will definitely be keeping that in the back of our minds. There are no public hearings. Uh, we do have some scheduled appointments. And uh, first is, speaking of town clerks, Amy Schrader to discuss a recommendation from the Board of Registrars regarding early voting in June and to accept a letter of resignation from the town clerk. So, Hi, Amy Schrader, town clerk. Um, in your meeting material, you should have a letter from the Board of Registrars from our meeting last night on March 27. Um, that letter addresses early in-person voting for our local election, which is scheduled for June 13th. Okay. Um, in 2022, the state laws changed and now require that state and federal elections offer early vote by mail and early in-person voting. The state has given the towns the authority to um, act out of early vote by mail and opt in to early in-person voting. Um, at a brief meeting last night with the, with the Board of Registrars, it was unanimously, unanimously recommended that the select board approve early in-person voting for a local election. So we would still continue with early vote by mail for our local election. We wouldn't opt out of that, but we are going to opt in to offer early in-person voting. Um, the recommendation will um, goes along with ma mail-in voting, will ensure that the voters will have ample opportunity to participate in our local election. And I'd be interested to see if it brings more voters in. So we could offer early in-person voting during our regular business hours. Um, with the size population we have, we only have to offer early in-person voting for 25% of our regular business hours. But we're not, I would recommend not doing that. I would say that we have it, you know, that we're open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, just so we don't have to turn somebody away at 2 p.m. because we stopped it at noon. Like I just, I would prefer not to do that. Um, so the Board of Registrars and myself would like to offer early in-person voting. Um, to continue to offer early vote by mail, I don't think it's going to, there will be minimal additional expenses to go along with either early in-person voting or vote by mail. Um, since we'll be, there's no additional staff needed. Um, of course, I'm always willing to help, you know, facilitate all of it. Um, early vote by mail, we are already gonna have absentee ballots or the same ballots that are used for early vote by mail. Um, there's already maybe a little more than a handful of early vote, um, vote by mail applications. I don't see us getting too, too many of those. So it'd be interesting to see if the vote, voters count those up for a local election. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our recommendation. So we're discussing, are we voting on whether we approve that? You do, we, we do need a, a vote from the select board, yes. Yeah. I, I would move that we agree with your recommendation I, on the reg board of registrars. I mean, I, I think when you said it's free, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you had me agree. It should be a little additional work on the town clerk's end, but I do yeah. feel it's doable. Um, the numbers, unless we get, you know, everybody Let's coming in. <laughs> but okay. I think it's, it's great to offer. Yeah, yeah, I, I would not have any objection going along with what the registrars are 
Yeah. So shall we make it an official vote? I thought I heard a motion. You said oh, I, 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 I move that we accept the uh, early voting in person and um, uh, absentee as recommended by Amy Schrader, the town clerk and board of registrars. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Yes. Uh, aye. Yes. Opposed? Nothing. All right. And then there's this next one. If we don't accept this letter, then you stay, right? Yes. We've, we've yeah. done this it so many times in the past few months. Thank you. So um, remind me where we are, Brian. Amy resigns. We're going to reject it. We're going to reject it. Okay. Um, no, then we won't have a treasurer collector. Damn, just give her some generic title of whatever and she can do it all. Yeah. Okay. Many no, hats, lady. She is a treasurer collector. We would have to Maybe reject that resignation, too. Oh. You missed. <laughs> um, yes. So this will leave a vacancy, obviously, in the Town clerk the, and the town clerk, is there, there is a uh, another oh, item under your business or have a recommendation for um an interim appointment uh, because of the timing of the resignation. Um this position will appear. I thought that's a town well, you're still town clerk because nobody accepted it yet. This will appear on the June 13th. 13th. Um, election, election yeah. ballot. Um, so the the time, so so the interim position mm. would be from from today, March tonight, through, tomorrow, whatever, mm. through June thirteenth, essentially. 13th. Um, okay. And so that position would be on the ballot, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, and when when. Our papers due for that. When would nomination papers be due for that? Well, for the for April the position to be on the ballot, it has to be vacant before April 10th. Right. And then nomination papers are due back to the Board of Registrars, I think, on April 25th or 20th. 20 something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And yeah. so do we have at the moment an assistant town clerk? Yes. I, I think we do. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. I, we still have an assistant oh, at the moment. Um, when when Lynn um oh, retired, yeah, you, yeah, yeah you you you. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Yes, we do. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. How many hours and what kind of work is involved in being the town clerk if we want to drum up interest amongst people that we know? So it's a 28 hour a week position. Mm -hmm. um, so you have what we would consider off years where you only have the local town election and there's no state or federal elections or presidential or federal elections. Um, so those are the years that you can get other office work done. Um, during the years that you have three or four elections are the years that you're probably doing more than 28 hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, early vote by mail can can be a little bit cumbersome for the position. Um, but I mean, it's it, like people and the townspeople. I mean, there's a lot of nice things that job duties that go along with it. Um, so I think it's appealing hopefully to get some candidates, but and I would be more than willing to talk to anybody about it or give them some advice. And I'm sure Lynn, the previous town clerk, would you know give some advice also. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. What is the how long is the term the elected term? <laughs> Three years. Three years. So yep. it would not be this is not the regular cycle for it to come up. You are right. Yep. Yep. Okay. So the vote this year will it be for a three year term or to fill the unexpired term? Will it be a one year it election would, or a three year election? I think it would be to, to finish up my term. Okay, that's yes. true. Yeah. Just checking. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, 
are we going to accept this letter? Yeah. I think we reluctantly. Respectfully and reluctantly. Yeah. Do we have to vote to accept it? Or do we just, will we, the tears we are shedding now on the video be proof enough? Well, let's just vote it? to accept it. Okay. But because it's an elected position, I think it would be good to have a vote. Okay. I move that we accept Amy Schrader's letter of resignation as we tell her. Second. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. So we're going to take down your nameplate out there too. Okay. I'm going to hate you. Okay. Okay. All right. Next uh, is the Energy Committee to discuss the Municipal Electricity Aggregation Program and the next step for soliciting future years of the program and to authorize a signatory for the future contracts. Okay, please. that would be perfect, sure. please. All right, um, so on that portion, on behalf of the Wakely Energy Committee, I want to point out that Paul Newland is the chair of the committee, hmm. um, but uh, we've all participated in the original formation of this and are uh, have been participating in the meetings regarding this continuation. So what I'm here to do is to discuss uh, the program by which Waitley, the town of Waitley has been buying electricity on behalf or on the benefit of its residents, what the benefits have been, um, and what we would need to ask of you in order to be able to continue to do this uh, beyond the end of the year. All right. Um, and I would like to be able to have one of us come back in a couple of weeks once we have what's called indicative pricing at that point to discuss whether it looks like a good idea to continue and to ask for a member of the, uh, the town, a town employee to be authorized to uh, commit to a purchase of electricity on the date uh, that actual pricing appears, should it be favorable? Okay. So, um, where favorable gets to be decided by the select board. Okay. So, um, as you may know, back in ancient times, uh, the company that supplied your electricity also used to produce it, right? Not just deliver it over the utility lines, but also generate it. They had giant coils of copper wire rotating inside magnets and generating AC electricity. Now, sometimes they would produce too much or too little, and so they would sell it to the adjoining utility or buy from the adjoining utility. And at some point, uh, the generators of the electricity uh, thought it would be a brilliant idea to be able to sell electricity to anyone in the country. Uh, and convince the state of Massachusetts to, to make a change where the company that delivers your electricity, the utility that services the lines and hooks you up for electricity and comes and does repairs, would be different from the company that actually generated the electricity the utility delivered. Uh, this was supposed to save us lots of money. Um, it, generate lots of customers for some very large power generation companies. Uh, it was mostly an option for businesses who might have three or four offers to pick from and could choose a price. It's only been recently that uh, individual residents have been able to choose between have multiple offers for electricity. Uh, most of these with two exceptions have been were considered by the recent attorney general, now governor of Massachusetts, to not be a good deal in the interest of Massachusetts residents. The two exceptions were when the town itself was the utility, or when the town it purchased the electricity on behalf of its residents. Um, and Waitley does the second. It's called electricity aggregation. We had a town meeting uh, several years back where the town authorized, where the town meeting, the legislature, the people authorized the town as represented by the select board to enter into an agreement to purchase electricity on behalf of town residents. 
and to provide that as an alternative to the electricity that the utility might otherwise purchase. So let's back up a second. It's probably important to say that once deregulation happened, um, the legislature recognized that not everybody wants to go out and shop for an electricity provider. Uh, and so if you didn't want to, or if there was no option, the utility was obliged to go out and buy electricity for you. Uh, those few people who still participate that way are buying from Eversource something called basic service. Uh, basic service this last winter was on the order of 30 cents a kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. The electricity provided that the town has bought and gone out and bought and contracted for and was able to sell to town residents who participated was on the order of 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, we have in the entire, we've been doing this for about three years. And over that three years, the electricity that the town has gone out and bought on behalf of town residents has always been cheaper and has also been environmentally cleaner in terms of carbon emissions as the, and in terms of the sources from which electricity is produced than what the utility has provided on basic service. And in fact, the instructions from the town uh, residents were not to enter into such a program if at the beginning of the program both of those conditions were not met. So it has been a pledge that we would offer something that was cheaper and greener, right, than otherwise available through basic service. Now this is not that at first it was a very small difference, but because when we do municipal aggregation, uh, when we do this process, we're able to choose a time of purchase that's any time during the year that looks to be favorable. And because we can choose a duration uh, for the contract of anywhere from a year to, say, three years, uh, we have a purchasing advantage over the utilities, right? The utilities are trying as best they can. And they're obliged to go out and look for cheap, but they're all, they're obliged to go out and buy twice a year, you know, every a certain amount every six months. And so they'll buy half of what they need in June and the other half of what they need in, in January or December. Um, and that average of those two is, becomes the price for the next session. As a result, they don't have a lot of good deals. Imagine the only time you could go out and buy flowers were uh, for Valentine's Day and Memorial Day. Guess what? The prices for the flowers are gonna be high on those days, right? So we um, opted into a program where we first bought electricity for three months. That took us through September through January. And then starting this, would now will be a three-year period a three-year contract with a guaranteed price. Uh, that price went up once when mandated by the state, and it went up for everybody, you know, regardless of where you got electricity from. But otherwise, the price has been what it was three years ago. So not surprisingly, that was nine or 10 cents, you know, just under, depending on exactly how green you want your electricity. And it's remained a very good deal. Um, it's usually a good deal if you can time the pricing and you can time the duration of the contract. Uh, and it will continue to be a better deal than whatever source can provide through the end of this year. Um, all right, so we think that we have also been able to offer something which was originally more expensive than Eversource Bait and Service, but it was from 100% new carbon emission free sources. And there was a demand in town for that. That was 13 cents a kilowatt hour, which is still astonishingly cheaper, right? Than uh, what some residents have been paying this um, winter. 
I should point out two uh, issues of the, you know, of concern. In order to be able to have a large enough market to get good pricing, we pool our resources with several other towns from Franklin County, um, uh, some 14, 15, 16 towns. And there are actually more that want to join us, right? Because we have done so well. Uh, but it is a price then that our ability to continue this relies on the towns to continue to want to participate as a group for their buying power. The second is uh, we need to have a, what's called an opt out program. That is, town residents will buy, will have their electricity provided by the the provider the town selects, unless they opt out. So everybody was automatically enrolled to this program unless they said, forget it, I'm sticking with it, I like basic service. Um, and, and some people were skeptical, um, you know, about the pricing and other people just didn't want to change. Uh, that has largely gone away, but there are still some people insisted on paying 30 cents a kilowatt hour instead of 10 uh, this, this winter. Um, okay, so... As a result, we need to reauthorize this at the end of each contract because it again will be an opt-out thing. Whenever there's a pricing change, um, there's or whenever a new person comes in, they have a they have this choice to opt out and choose basic services. And in fact, you can do that at any time. And so, had we ever been more expensive than the basic service? The electricity that the utility is obligated to go out and buy for you if you don't let the town go out and buy it for you. Uh, they could have switched at any time for no fee on our side. There are these third party ones. Again, the former attorney general, our current governor, when, when, when she was attorney general, was very uh, down on those because there was often a transfer fee or something like that, or you know, to leave the program. So I want to emphasize the program that we've been in, there's never been a fee to join, there's never been a fee to leave, there's no fee to leave uh, a resources, basic service, or to join. So you could always choose the best option. Uh, but if we were not plausibly going to be cheaper and greener, then there's not really an option, a reason to do it. We have every reason to think that we can continue to do that, but we don't yet have price. So let me stop at this point and see what questions you have, and then I can discuss what would need to happen next if we want to continue. The only question I have is how, given that all the electricity that is generated goes on to the grid, yes. how do you guarantee greener that our energy is coming from a greener source? Well, the only way you can guarantee that is that you are guaranteeing customers for a particular utility that, uh, well, I, was, I should say generate a facility. Um, and so they, we say that we're going to buy this much hydro or this much wind or this much uh, whatever, um, and, or, or this much uh, natural gas production, right? Um, and, and, and so they say, okay, because you're going to agree to do this for say a long period, like three years, um, we can go ahead and buy the fuel or buy what's needed to produce the electricity in any other way and be sure to get a profit, right? And so we will commit to producing the electricity that you need, right, for these three years. Now, there are other companies doing the same, but they're not producing electricity they can't sell it somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they adjust the amount they produce based on the demand of, of the people here. And, and so once it's on the you, you aren't guaranteeing it's not like electrons actually flow from what right we hear that right no it, it, it's like a wave right when water a wave travels across the water without the water molecules actually traveling all the way across the Atlantic Ocean right. 
And the same thing happens with the energy that's being carried by the oscillation of electrons back and forth. So that can come from anywhere and go to anywhere. What you are doing with your money is saying this source will be providing some of that that goes on there. So you're changing what goes on to the grid by, by saying, I'm going to give money to that particular company to do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, unless you become your own producer, right? You won't know. And then even then, you usually tie to the grid. Mm -hmm. um, other questions? No questions here. No. Okay. So um, the town original mm -hmm. authorization came from town meeting, and that's good for as long as the town representatives in the form of the select board want to continue. But at the end of each contract, there has to actually be an authorized representative of the town that will commit to that duration contract at that price. I say at that price, typically there will be more than one option offered to town residents. One which is just, you know, as cheap as is reasonable, but it, that's greener. And one would typically be like a 100% new renewable carbon free options. Those were the things that the town has wanted in the past. Nobody has signed up for anything in between. There were a couple of other options. So we would go and provide those again and one would be more would be higher priced than another, but you would know that price. It would be fixed for the duration of the contract. Um, so how is this done? The consultants that our towns rely on our colonial power and in many residents who wanted to go in and opt in because they didn't opt because they opted out originally dealt with colonial power and colonial power had arranged for a certain company to provide electricity in that case it was dinergy dinergy something like yeah right um so once again we've arranged to work with colonial you know, they get like one tenth of one percent of one, you know, they get like a tenth of a penny on every kilowatt hour for this, this service. Um, and they don't quote me on that number. It's something yeah, I think it's smaller than it's that. it's maybe I think it might be 10 times smaller, but I mean, they get a small, they make money by making a very tiny amount over everybody's electricity. Uh, and in exchange, they go out and they do the work of recommending when to buy the electricity and, and tending bids. And so they are going to send out bids to several different suppliers and meet our criteria. For example, last time we said the state allows burning wood as uh, and, and, and refuse as uh, clean electricity, and we don't count that as clean electricity, so we don't want any of the sources. All right. Um, so whatever our criteria are, they go out and say, what price would you sell it to us? And that happens in two stages, right? The first is an indicative price. And that will happen on April 10th. I would like to have one of us eventually come back to the next select more meeting after that, but before the 24th, to have you say, are you still on board, right? Um, and if you're on board to authorize a representative who could sign the contract on behalf of the town. Last time that was Brian in his role as town administrator, and I would recommend that you do that again. All right, if you have authorized Brian at your next meeting, we don't use the pricing that's given on the 10th. That's just indicative of where the market is at that point. The actual purchase date would be April 24th. And so you would need to give clear guidance to your representative, the conditions under which he is authorized to go forward and sign the contract, right? Um, and we can certainly recommend a range of pricing, right? Or a range of contracts there based on the indicative. But I think until you have that, um, it is premature. Uh, and we would also ask for authorization regarding the packages that will be offered to town, right? Um, and then if that's the case, then on the 24th, new pricing arrives. 
And within an hour, all 16 or 18 towns are, have to say yes and push a button, right? For that price, for that duration. So obviously Colonial prepares as well. Um, and, uh, but a decision must be made on that day because prices change every day. Um, the Colonial can study the market, see when it's, uh, Eversource managed to, well, National Grid managed to purchase its two days of electricity to purchase the first the peaks. <laughs> of, uh, and so it, it's quite clear that we'd be cheaper than the National Grid, but we also have to look at the issue about um, Eversource. Now, Eversource is shifting its purchasing times. And uh, as a result, you can't wait until you have the pricing for next year from Eversource to make a decision because you wouldn't have that. The state doesn't allow that to happen until October or November, right? We can see from the purchasing that's made that we're cheaper through the end of the year, but you're making an educated guess about the future with the reminder that anybody who wants to switch from one to the other, from the town provided source of electricity to every sort of space can do so at any time. It takes a couple of months for it to register, but it's completely free and you're open to free. So, um, that's what's been uh, going on. Um, we've saved the town's residents a lot of money, increasingly large amounts of money fluctuate because the utilities are required to have their pricing every six months. And so the winter is always more expensive than the summer, but it's been better and it's been cleaner, right? Um, and that, so that's our goal again. Uh, we'll look to make sure that that's feasible on the 10th. If it is, we'll recommend that you authorize us to be able to make a purchase on the 24th if the situation has not changed so dramatically that we say, no, we can't participate. Okay, so I'm hearing it's no action needed tonight, but be ready for some action on the 10th of night. Right. I was around for the last time we did this and um, the negative pricing was spot on. Um, it was easy to make the definition of, um, you know, what, because we had, had a bazillion meetings, but we, we kind of know what people want. They want greener and cheaper. Um, so I, I think we have all the ducks already in the way from last time. Um, nobody knew how spectacularly great that was going to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. As far as, as getting people cheap electricity. Mm -hmm. um, we were speaking with somebody from another one of the towns that participated who was like, he was paying that 30 cents a kilowatt hour because he's just, just suspicious of municipal aggregation. And I think over a couple of beers there at the, <laughs> at the place we happened to be, um, I think he was going to go sign up for his municipal aggregation. Mm -hmm. um, so, right. It's, it's, a, it's a service the town offers for the benefit of town residents, right? And I think the reason it works is it's because it's the town in its service, in its acting as a representative that, that is looking out for the interests of the town first, yeah. right? its residents first. Yeah. Uh, and so it is one of only two ways that has been recommended by our now current governor, you know, for yeah. people to do it. There are other options. People are still free to choose those. They just would have to opt out of uh, the program the town is providing. Right. And if someone, oh, someone is currently opted out, they won't somehow get opted in. Um, if, if you're in a third party program, yeah. the conditions for getting out of that depend on what the third party is. And that's one of the reasons how you can end up spending a lot more money than you anticipated. However, there is, a, if from if you are able to leave that contract and you, or you consider unfavorable terms, you're able to opt in at any time. Um, it's just that there would be usually a two month delay to update the records and, and to change over everything. Um, and whereas anybody who's already in the program needs to do nothing, right? 
everybody who's already benefited from this will continue to benefit as long as you reauthorize and they don't need to do there. You need to do it when you need a new electricity service hookup or if you want to change from something else. Okay, great. Anybody else have any more? No. Thank you. All right. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. So the water folks, I think many of them are in the hallway. Um, all right. Well, come on up, please. Um, Sorry, I ran 10 over. But you, you got started late, too. Uh, so, hey John, John, you had sent out something via. Email. Yes, that's why I want to just at least. I know George is here. It's it all a pitch for some money to put on your. Uh, a generator, which we, you know, required to put in. Well, DP says that it just started a number of years ago. After, after so we're back on the robot back to the generator and everything. After the 9/11 happened, EPA was all over making sure that water systems were able to provide water and have good water, despite what might happen. And they wanted they would really be able to get rid of backup generators. It's not a bad idea. It's a good idea to have it. We don't have one down at the pump house. If that for some reason that goes down and you can't fix it within 24 hours, while you got us water in the tank and you don't have the emergency shelter at the school and all that, we really we really need to get the generator. So the reason I gave you, I, I put this together the one pager mm -hmm. that shows the various uh scenarios. If you look at that, yeah, all, okay. I, all I did this is, one? Yes. Okay. Across the top is simply uh, five different scenarios of operating budget. 190,000, 230,000. So in there somewhere, but I'm uh, trying to get a hold of some numbers from Wayne. And I know the, the whole village, just the, the town center system take on was $200,000, mucks up the whole look at Wayne Simply with the way things are run. But it seems like we're in the $200,000 operating, annual operating cost uh, for you know, everything. And if you produce, and we've been to somewhere between 35 million and 40 million gallons per year in terms of water produced. So you just do the math and you see what the cost of producing a thousand gallons of water is. And that's what's in the table. So for two hundred thousand dollars, if you're producing forty million gallons of, of water a year, it's costing five dollars a thousand to produce it. So that's just a way to look compare look at the numbers. So you can see what happens to the cost of the water we produce depending on the operating cost, which is just what it costs to, to get the water out there. And you know, in, in this example, it's anywhere from 475 to five to 650, 60. Bet. So, you know, obviously our rates are too low at the moment. We have to do something about that to make sure there's no revenue for the system to function efficiently. What are the, I'm sorry, can I interrupt? What are the current rates? Four, it's 465 to 435. Thank you. And, and you're basically saying, I don't know what the annual operating cost is going to be, but I think it'll be between 190 and 230,000. Right. And you don't know how many gallons per year you're going to have to provide, but you think it's going to be between 35,000 to 40,000. That's so, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I know they're, they're, they're not just numbers you pulled out of the air, they're numbers that uh, are related to right. what we've done in the past. So, no, just want to make sure that's what the, I mean, so the grid comes from kind of your best educated guess of gallons per year low and high yeah. and operating budget, which because it's wider, you broke it up into right. more fast. Just to show you the, because that's what we, as we, as we come, we want to design a rate structure that's not just about a thousand gallons, that's all you pay. We have to come up with a way to maintain a steady flow of no. cash yeah. that doesn't just depend on consumption. Because yeah. the, the other is if you increase consumption, you increase revenue, which you also increase cost. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's just, it doesn't stop. And then the more revenue, the more you produce, then you get into, the capital improvement that which we have make sure which by the way this thing is now i know brian was sent an electronic copy by way yesterday and i, I don't record it all but, but the, the the two pages that you got that have the table which is at the end of that report that just was the suggestions for one of the things we will need to be doing need to do to the system over 20 years to keep it coming and you know and it's involves, and I just broke it down at the bottom of this sheet to simple categories you know, generators, meters, storage, distribution, source, and treatment. We don't know about treatment at this point. So, the idea is, is what I do in the second part of that, that table is if you were to try to raise the revenue for the capital improvements from the rates, as we presently do the rates, 
and broke it up over just to be, you know, I just give an, an, an eyeball number. If it's a two million dollars in capital improvements over 20 years, and you've tried to raise it equally, you know, every, every you know, by a percentage every year, you're gonna get a hundred thousand dollars of revenue every year to tuck it aside so you can have it. And look what that does to the rates. And this is not like, for example, under two hundred thousand dollars and thirty-five thousand gallons per year, the eight dollars fifty-seven cents. That's not in addition to five seventy one from the previous. That's, what that's it would cost including the water at that amount of ground right. needed. There's so if you're paying stream, the mm. revenue stream in that case, instead of being two hundred thousand, be three hundred thousand. You can put a hundred thousand aside. Right. I know there's mysteries of financing in Massachusetts that I'm not. I'm not. Speaking. No, it, it, no, it, it makes it's a, it's about right. Right. Um, it seems to me. See, that I've always looked. I mean, I I, I did training in public water systems for years, and I had a whole thing called uh, a class, of course I used to do about a class about budget management. It was also about capital improvements, and you know, in, in generating enough revenue to pay your operating costs is one thing. But it's like your household or your, your town. You, should, you need to have an operating. Ex, ex, you need to have a little bit, a little bit extra in your operating budget to take care of your emergencies. I would say the average is only ten percent. So if you need two hundred thousand dollars in revenue, you need two hundred twenty thousand, and have twenty thousand instead of a year in case you need it during the year because something blows up, you don't know it, and you have some money to go to. And if you don't use it that year, you will roll it over to the next year and continue raising it so that you always have extra money. And on top of that, you start a capital budget to look at your long term plans and start raising the money put aside to avoid going into debt. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you don't you, you don't have to go in debt. Does not uh, not mean that debt may be the best way to do it for some people. That was just simply a way of looking at it in simple financing to me. So all I'm doing here is saying, well, if you want to raise that revenue from rates and have it available, then over the course of those 20 years, you're looking to get 40 say again for the 40 million gallons a year. If you want to have an operating budget of 200,000, then to have that money set aside as you go along, now your water is going to cost you seven dollars and fifty cents. Per thousand to produce. Okay. If it costs that much to produce, what are you then going to charge the customer? Are you charge well, you got to charge at least that. No, no, I was going to say, do you charge them over and above, or are you? That's what you figure you, out. Yeah. You know, are you operating? Right. Nobody's saying this for the rent for the bid. This yeah, no, is, no, I understand. I just want to give you guys a little picture of what it costs to run your water system. Yeah. It's a whole system. And we want to make it work efficiently and effectively for everybody. And the backside of that is in the capital side, I means you don't have to raise all that money. I don't know if it's pragmatic to do it on a small rate base like we have. Not a big city. You know, so that's where we come into the capital approval plan and whatever grant dollars are floating around, how we'd like to be considered. We are looking at them because in, in the capital approval plan, as you look at it, the generators are a short-term need. The meters is, is a continuing thing. The meters run slow over time, they wear out, you got to replace either the the uh, guts of the whole thing. And these meters are the meters at the wellhead or at people's houses? At people's houses. Yeah. So you don't houses. charge people for that? Hmm? You that don't it? charge individuals for that? No. Okay. No, that's the meter is, our, is ours to read so you can charge them for the water they use. And what's the million dollars for distribution? Distribution is for the, you know, that's for the, those, that's basically for the loop, the loops in the system. So go under the railroad tracks at Egypt Road to put a little extension down on um, Chesley Plain Road to get to the town line. And the other one is to loop it up at Swamp Road and North Street up there. So, so these are current distribution like, ideas? Those ideas, things in the uh, one for uh, Egypt Road is already in the works. I'm trying to move these. But yeah, because so, I thought we got some grant money for that. Right. Yeah. Right. They're expensive. I mean, that's, one right. of the, that's one of the so, rare Yeah, so, that, so some of this is actually already being done and paid for by care of, The storage is, is, is taken care of the tank. It's not about putting a new tank in. Mm -hmm. The distribution of the, the pipes. The, the source is we are under order basically by DEP to get another source. Because the way they're operating right now is they want to see your main source be able to, you know, it has to, you have to be able to supply your peak daily demand without with your main source offline. So if our main well goes offline, we can't provide that water. The other side of it is if you want to grow the town and use the system, you need more water. And the first step we're going to be have to evaluate. Uh, I, I'm a new guy in here, but I have hydrogeology background. I look at all this stuff. 
that was experienced when, it, when the system was designed and put together. And it looks to me like, you know, we, the first thing we want to do is reevaluate that aquifer down there where, where the well is. Because according to the, the stuff that I do, i produce them, you can put another well in now. They get enough water. But you don't know until you go back and retest it. And that's our first expense. And that'd be like probably $50,000. But if that pans out, then it doesn't, it can't do it. And then you go looking for another source. And now your cost could jump beyond $2 million. Because you know, finding an aqua site, developing it, buying the land, uh, and, and you know, it's just it's really expensive. So I'm like crossing my fingers that we can get another well down there. It's, it mainly costs us 500000 which is not small, but it's not $2 million. You know? But that's that's not today or tomorrow. That's something we have to get set to do over the next, say, the next 10 years. We have to get that in play. And, and now, again, if you expand the system, if you get more users, if you use more water, that treatment plant is really small. And you're basically using a series of tanks that is like if you have a water softener in your house, you have a tank in the basement with the filter meter in it, and the water goes through it and it takes up all the contaminants you don't want, and out comes the clean water. We have several of them in succession, in series, in, in that little concrete block building. And if you increase the use of more water produced, that treatment plant is going to have to be expanded to get the treatment. Mm -hmm. and that could not, it may not mean just putting another tank in there. We may have to redo the whole thing. We don't know. That's something that would be in the future. So, all I'm going to take across, across to my little field here is to realize that this the system works really well. It's fairly new, things aren't breaking. The treatment plant, that's, that process that's in place as good as you get for manganese removal, it works wonderfully. Uh, this, it's good. The system works well. We want to make sure it works well in the future and it serves the town. And there's going to be a lot of money involved in that down the road. And we need to have you guys thinking with us about where we're going to get those funds. We certainly don't want to raise the rates up to, you know, $9 a thousand gallons. That's a lot. I mean, it's in a way it's cheap because you think of $5 a thousand, oh my God, is that, that's only half a cent for a gallon of water. You get a gallon yeah. for a cent. I mean, two gallons for a cent. That's pretty cheap. But if you go to, you know, we, we're going to try to come up with ways to encourage people to not to stop using it, but to don't throw it away, conserve it, value it, because it's, it's, it's a valuable resource. And if we end up just, you know, right now our usage is beyond the states where they, they want us to have our usage down to less than 65 gallons per person per day. So we're above that. And it's not just because people are watering the lawns, people are using water. Watering lawns is one thing. The irrigating greenhouse is another. It's all there. That's our consumption. We need to try to get people to conserve a little more and do a little more the, the judicial body they use it. But uh, all right, so, well, things right in the street. <laughs> anyway, so that's all I was trying to say. You know, that's why we, we really could use some help with, with the capital stuff in terms of the grant money, because it does benefit the town, especially the generators at this point. So I don't know if, who's up. We have some questions or the other. I don't know. We did it all. Yeah. So please give us some. Ask a question. One of the things we're going to be doing is very different. We, we have to sit down and develop a rate structure. You know, it's not just about charging. Yeah. Well, you know, your voice goes really low, and I can't hear and understand it. We have to. We have to try to work on a, you know developing a good rate structure that is to see. If you raise the rates a lot, people are going to cut back on their usage. If they cut back on their usage, that cuts back on our revenue. We need to have a, make sure we have a revenue stream without making people pay a whole lot of money. So we're coming, we went from a way that it's not just about how much more do you use about the system itself and paying everybody paying a share to keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, I, I was just thinking in relation to. Uh, 8C on your agenda about the request from Natalie Blay about budget priorities for the capital projects from ten to $100,000 for the state earmarks. Okay. I was wondering if there was one thing on here that's, that's in that price range that would be a priority of the water department. So, so we have a request from a representative to um, submit you know, project capital projects or, or projects that would that would benefit from one time infusion of, of state aid between ten and hundred thousand dollars 
um, is what sort of rises to the top? Do you think for, yeah. the, for the water department? For me, I mean, I don't know for else. Really, I'm thinking. I, I think the uh, yes, to do the initial exploration needs to be the ability to get on the well down where we are. It'd be about fifty grand. That makes sense. Say hundred thousand grand. <laughs> yeah, make make it a task and you can have you have a deal. Because you know, again, if, if, if the idea is in, in the world of hydrogen, you, you you guys do acceptance to me. You know, permeability. This is the ground. In, in the world of geology, they just talk about con, uh, hydraulic conductivity or transmissivity. In other words, mm -hmm. the water will, will penetrate in, but does it move through rapidly enough for you to pull it out? And the, what, that act for is very small. So it's narrow and it's not very wide or, or deep, but it's really transmissive and it puts a lot of water through it. Uh, from what I saw in the hydrogeologic stuff, it's saying you get a million gallons a day out of there. If you can get a million gallons a day, we can put another well out. But we have to make sure that's possible. If that's possible, then we know we can do it. Yeah. And then we've got a much more affordable way to get another source at a time. So are you asking for help of Applying to grants, yes. like what Brian just suggested, or are you asking for money that we currently have, or what are you asking? Either one. Either Take one. both. We're Americans. Yeah. <laughs> well, you go first. Do, one do you or any of the other water commissioners have a history of the rate increases? How, when, when have the rates been increased? That's it's not, been a couple that, of years. I think. Yeah, I know you. You're, you're relatively new. It's been a while. When I came up four or five years ago, yeah. Half before that, I am here. I wasn't here. Yeah. Okay, so the last time the rates were raised at all was five years ago, and no one yeah. has has a recollection before that. I remember them being the same for a long, long time, and then there was an increase five years. It makes sounds about right. Um, and it, yeah, it, it might be that, there, that it is time to think about another rate increase. I, yeah. basically, I mean, basically, when we started the system, we had one of the highest rates in the valley, and it progressively <laughs> lost, yeah. money and lost money. In the last three or four years, DEP is requiring so much extra stuff done in it, and, and that we went over the 100,000 gallons a day. We put in, we had to do that uh, study. That's fifty thousand dollars right there. Mm -hmm. We didn't know we had to do. Right. Yep. And also, John talked about future. You know, putting out more water that would require a new pump house. New pump house, you'd have a green sand filter, which probably would double or triple the amount of water just for backwash to the filter. Mm -hmm. so, there's a lot to it, not just building a new building and put the filter yeah. in. There's always a lot more to it. That's one thing I found in this visit yeah. when I get involved in it. I think it's easy to do. Yeah. So anyway, thanks. Um, well, the, yeah, the, the one thing I would say is that when you're, if, if you're really thinking about asking for CLFRF money for a generator, then you need to have some options that are green. Something where you're going to get, maybe put up solar and have batteries to be running a backup generator. Because I don't want to use one penny of CLFRF money mm -hmm. to put in more ca carbon producing infrastructure. Something where, you know, in a, in a couple of years, we don't know what's happening to gas prices or whatever fuel you might want to put with it. I, but we know solar is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and the batteries are getting cheaper and cheaper. And but now it, pumps don't we, care. You can't put batteries down there. You could, the batteries don't have to be right next to it, but we should consider options that are not. We are getting solar. Excuse me. I want you to consider options that are not going to be hydrocarbon fuel based. Okay. That's to me, that's really important that I don't think I, I, I don't want to plow one more penny if I don't have to into things that are going to keep heating up the earth. For, and, for a generator? For a generator, for a generator. Not a, I don't want a natural gas generator. I want a diesel generator. I want something that's electric. And if we have to put battery storage elsewhere to help run it, then so be it. But I, but I, I don't, I think the idea with electric generators, you need 
a backup power source for that electric jet, sorry, electric pump, because you're talking about times when the when the grid goes down, right? right? So you normally would, may have your pumps running on electricity, but you need some sort of backup source for the electricity. It's so, a lot of money for something you hope never have to use. That's what it's up being. But when you're not using it, you can sell the electricity back. Yeah. And I did this. My house in yeah. New Hampshire just moved out from yeah. I put in that's five, six. I understand. Uh, yeah. So, so because we have a big agenda, I don't want to go too yep. far into it. But what but what I'm saying is when, when you come with a specific proposal for a generator that you're thinking about, um make get make us have let us have one option that has no fossil fuels associated. I'm, I'm glad you raised it because I wonder my I always says my house had an answer. I had backup batteries for the system. It cost me actually twenty thousand dollars to do that. Thank but I, I also with my curious story was like how do you you could run the pumps if you could have battery storage of electricity, you don't need the generator. You have the batteries to yeah. provide the electricity for the pumps. And whether that's feasible or not is worth looking at. Yeah, that, and, and and there are incentive programs for batteries and you can use those batteries as a source of income. If you have the batteries, you can sell back some of that electricity when the grid needs it at peak hours. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sell all of it, keep enough. Um, and it can be something that helps um, helps the water department have kind of their own other source of revenue. That's, I mean, I so I, basically I, I would be much more favorably disposed to look at a proposal for a generator that did not involve fossil fuels. Again, it wouldn't be a generator, just be the battery. Sorry. <laughs> the the uh, pumps. Yeah. You wouldn't need the backup electric system. The backup electric system. Oh, they're very cool. I mean, they're... I, I, I absolutely, I know I'm an electrical engineer. I actually know a little bit about it. My house and the, the grid would go all, down all the time. We'd lose power. You would not know we'd lose it yeah. because there was no generator fire up. There was no lapse time to meet it. Yep. Yep. But, you know, it was expensive. So, John, can you remind me your last name? Lucan, L U K I N. L U K I N. Okay, thank you. Because that's just like the second time. So now I'm going to have John, Luke, and I don't know what's the third time what I'm going to have to well, remember about you. I was here for three months of COVID. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I was sequestered and down the road here. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very thank much. You. Yeah, I have a couple. Oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I was happy to see this. Um, and I wonder if you would be willing to. Um, Definitely bring in a proposal for a, a battery backup, as Joyce is suggesting. But if you would be willing to even take this further, project it out over over the next ten years in terms of income and costs, revenue and costs. Um, sorry, all all of my calories are digesting my dinner right now, and none of them are in my head. <laughs> Uh, if you would be willing to do sort of a cost projection over the next five or ten years of how you're going to raise revenue and and how, and what you need to spend it on, well, so I know. Sort of you know excellent. I mean, I, you've sort of got the bare bones of it here, which I'm really happy to see. The well, um, capital plan was and it's very hard to get a handle. It's for me. It's hard yeah. to get a handle on it because I walked into this and you were doing the, the town center, which just yeah. mucked up the whole thing. Now you have your meters haven't read in a year. Yeah. So you know what the production was over the last year, yeah. but it's going to take a while to, to, to turn it off. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, that's we do know is the capital costs will be coming up. Yeah. And you know, I just want to make sure you folks are aware of those. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll try to manage as commissioners and deal with it. That we can try to raise all the capital and raise, but there's going to be a lot of squawking. There's going to what? He says a lot, a lot of squawking. Lot of squawking. Wow. Yep. Walking, yes. Swat. And that was my other question is communication with um the townspeople do you have. Yeah, we gotta work on that too. Yeah. yeah. So again, it's not it's it's not that it's cheap, but it's no it's not expensive at all. Yeah. If you come down yeah. from the cost of water. You basically just... need a good marketing plan. Yeah, yeah. 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 And remind you by having that rate increase in five years. Yeah. It's, it's still and nobody likes to see things over. And if we just went through a year of high inflation, it's not great. But you know, you never know how valuable it is to you lose it. You know, if I lost my supply of beer, I would, I would grip right, but it wouldn't do me harm. But if, if the water goes down, no, it's important. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, item six. 
Uh, under COVID-19, the only thing we have here is the reminder that COVID-19 rapid test tests are available at the town offices, library, and police station. Okay. Um, now on to old business. The first item is to discuss using CLFRF monies for proposed capital projects and other projects. And oh, yeah, right. oh, this, is, this hurts. So maybe it can make it easier. Mm -hmm. Um, at, at the last meeting, there was different suggestions that were made, and yeah, you know, the board wanted the same project. Um, I don't know that there needs to be actual decisions tonight. Yeah. I mean, I'm there needs to be decisions in terms of. Uh, I think in terms of the next sort of the discussion with the finance committee, right? In terms of how some of these yeah. projects are going to be funded. Um, but I don't know that that needs to happen tonight yeah. uh, or actual decisions happen tonight. Um, but I think at last time that the board had talked about somewhere in the ballpark of 130,000, split it down the middle yeah. to the extent possible. And um, 130 this year, 130 next, you know, next was clear. So, would it be possible to bring this tiny little thing up on the screen so that we can actually yeah. read it? Yeah, but if it's really, really small on the screen, too. Yeah, right now. I have a trouble. We have a big, you get a big. Um, Oh, I, 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 no, I can't. Yeah, use yeah, you your phone as back fire. I know, I, I, I know oh. I can, but I, I'm not going to. I'm going to try to find something else that, oh, something we got last week from the finance committee. Ooh. Increase. Yeah. Bigger, bigger, please. Yeah. I was Let us cross you around there, bud. There we go. There, there we go. go. So much easier. All these Zoom bubbles are. Covering all the areas. Yeah, if you can hit, if you hit the little um, the little slight one, the, the smallest one across the top there. Yeah. Uh, it'll go down to one bubble, I think, or like um, on the black one up at the top. You see, there's like uh, some some different icons. Oh. Yeah. I gotta do it on the right laptop. You gotta do it on the correct laptop. There you go. There you. There we go. So everybody yes. can hear us, but. They can't see us anymore. Um, and so, so those are the oh, things we've down. already spent on. Oh, geez. Goodness <laughs> there we go. Yeah, How about that? Beautiful. So, right. The thing I was trying to look up was related to the. Um, the information that um, I can't remember which finance committee guy it was who he, he went and looked up a number of things um, and uh, related to the cost of the uh, electric truck and when it might um, become cheaper long term than a, a mm. than a gas powered uh, car. He had something in there called software maintenance. And I had no idea what that was. But now, to the best of my knowledge, I have probably need to look a little closer at it. Um, I think that's for a public charging station, like getting charge point to come in and put a charge station in. Those have software mm -hmm. because you're billing different people for the amount of electricity they use. Um, a charge station that you have that's just dedicated to town vehicles. Not going to have complicated software. The the one in my garage cost us six hundred dollars plus um, hundred something for the electrician to install it, and it has no software. You just plug it in and unplug it when you're done. Um, so I don't think all of the costs that are in that spreadsheet are um, are real. So, I, but I need more time to take a closer look at what they are. Um, and especially like where he got that number from, I'd like to talk to the people he got it from to see if um, what I 
think I figured out about that charge station or that software fee um, is actually real or not. So that's the question, especially because the truck comes with the charger. I don't think they're going to give you something that goes on a network and you sell electricity to just anybody. Um, so that's uh, that was one um, one thing that I, I wanted to add in there, but I don't have enough to basically show you a spreadsheet that might be up to date. Um, I don't know. I don't feel, I don't have very different feelings than the last time <laughs> uh, to go for it. Some take some of these high priority items off, but it, in a way it might be nice to have some other input from the finance committee. And maybe I can make a point of trying to get more information um, regarding that uh, spreadsheet before well, their next meeting. Well, I think there's some things we can probably take off of these <clears throat> at least for consideration for the CLFRF line. Uh, the Christian Lane culvert, yeah, for, I think should come off this list and hope to get either an increased grant or the small project money or yeah. something like that. Uh, I don't, given the size of them, I don't know that the either of the trucks should come out of this. Yeah, either that may be. Um, they would just eat up so much of it. Right. Yeah. So if we take out the highest ticket items. Um, and the, uh, the Don maybe I don't know, uh, Chief was here before, I don't know if he still is. The tasers and body camera for the police, it looks like we're gonna be more likely going to a subscription service rather than a lump sum payment up front. That's 60,000. So I think that that's not something that would end up being a capital, but a, a budget item. Yeah. So then it might come off for capital. Yeah, that, that, that's what yeah. the chief indicated when he was in here that we, yeah, on yeah. that it would go to subscription, at well, which point it becomes an every year expense and not a capital expense. Right. Well, well, if I just added it correctly, it comes out to. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to add it again before. Oh, no, and the batting cages should be a CPA. CPA. Yeah. And um, am I remembering it right? Um, those last two $12,000 were the lower priority items. The, well, well the, the, the one, the batting cages would be a CPA. Should be right, should should be a CPA item in any case. Yeah. But they were still put in. They were like in yellow. I can't remember what color. Yeah. It was a color coded thing last time. And and I think the surveillance system. Yes, the, rec order. the recommendation was not to, especially if we're right. looking to reconfigure that whole building, right. not to put that much money into yeah. a short term surveillance system. So if we have four hundred and fifty three. Um, and I'm I'm gonna ignore the last three digits because I'm just gonna round things up. Four hundred. Oh, that's fine. Okay, well, call it four hundred fifty-three, and we're taking away a uh, hundred thousand dollar item, so that makes it three fifty-three. A hundred and twenty-five thousand. So you're oh you you've already done all this. Yeah. As but which twelve thousand dollar you put? Uh, that was. Uh, yeah, no, neither twelve thousand. Neither of those. Should, oh well, then neither. Should, right, yeah. Then it gets even, <clears throat> even less. So if we take off the biggest items, I've got in flooring replacement, window and chimney repair, electrical system upgrades, replace communication pagers, catalog town maps. Um, um, we we got a later uh, request for bylaw. Uh, codification for eleven thousand five hundred. I don't. Brian, it's not on here. Oh, it's not on this it's one. It's not on that one. It's on the other. Uh, okay. Seven. Financing day. I go. Right. So. 
So yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. And then there was also some, some discussion. There were a couple of other uh, possible uses for the money for one shot expenses. We've got the ambulance request yeah. from Skims, and we've got a yeah, uh, elementary school pay yeah. Sorry, I've been mean, oh, listening with one ear. That's okay. No, we 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 just had a couple. There are a couple of other requests uh, that are not um, on here. That are because those because they're not capital. They're oh. um, okay. So non capital things that we have to like um, the non capital things. Um, I have that sheet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keith, I've got a question for you. On the uh, library window chimney work. On the chimney? Yeah, yeah. The, that, I know that CPA can pay for restoration work, but not repair work. Correct? Uh, that, I don't have yeah. that answer. I, no. I'm asking the wrong part. Well, okay. <laughs> it cannot, the CPA cannot be used for regular maintenance. Cannot be used for regular maintenance, but can be used for restoration. Yeah. <clears throat> and the question is how much of the work on the library could be deemed restoration and how much is repair? Is there any way to break it out? That seems subjective. To the, depending on who you ask, might say it's repair, someone might say it's restoration. Yeah, the, well, the, the, the problem is that CPA's yeah. mandate makes that distinction. Right, but to keep, if you want to make the chimney look the way just like it yeah. was, that to me is more restoration. To repair it and change, change the appearance to it. I'm not sure what you're planning. I, I had only given... Yeah, I think the, we may have to... I had only given the trustees... The information I have okay. From now I know you would look at, so I didn't. We may have to hear from the trustees and try to figure out if we can break out that money and let some of it come out of CPA. Maybe some of it depends on the nature of the work. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think the CPC is. I think it'd be a hard argument to make. Yeah, I'll also going to yeah. pull pull yeah, the yeah. like we did and send them. No, I, yeah, and, okay. and we'll have lots of okay. I was there'll be lots of chances to spend CPA money on things that they won't have to worry about whether it's really allowed or not. Yeah, CPA has got more money. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's but we'll ask them to pay for more things. Well, the, 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 I would love to. The problem is they can only pay for certain things. Yeah. So the eleven five that you mentioned a moment ago, yes. that was the bylaws. Right. That one I I added in, and then the ambulance capital request. Is that the other one you're thinking, or separation costs, or frontier? Well, the tennis courts is that also a CPA? That's a CPA. Yeah. <laughs> so that one would not. Yeah. Separation costs. Yeah, the, the check the, the oh. right the right column is. Yeah. When. Yeah, when people leave, um, part of the teacher's contract is that they get paid for day, uh, well, sick days that they didn't take, oh, or vacation okay. days they didn't take, and things like that. Uh, yeah, I just, oh, well, it doesn't happen in my school, but yeah. And one comment on the 46,000 from the Skins. ambulance. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at the town's chart of accounts, there are three sort of <clears throat> leftover ambulance accounts uh, that total about $7,000 from when we had uh, okay. an when ambulance we really, yeah. that we may be able to repurpose that I would say should apply towards that $46,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a dent, but, but not, but still, the same amount left. Yeah. It, it, it would save CLFRF money. Oh, right. Yeah, it would it would make it forty even, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that one's a potential forty k, we'll call it, and 
20K. So that's 60 added to, I, I added up the others. I got 71,345. Um, instead of trying to subtract, adding is always easier. Um, and then these other twos are six. So that comes very close to our right, run the our one thirty. No, one, one thirty. And actually, it's right on. If you call it seven thousand, if you call it thirty nine, seven forty. Right for <laughs> for the ambulance. Yeah, yeah. you're right well, on one thirty. How would people feel about this? I I feel like that 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 might be a good choice for us. Putting some of it from what's listed as capital and some of it from things that are non-capital that are still going to help out. Um, but maybe say, rather than taking a vote tonight and committing ourselves to this, um, that we, you know, in the spirit of you know, working in harmony, um, mention this as our idea to the finance committee and get some input from them. Um, as to what yeah. what they think they may they may not care which item we do because it kind of comes off of their list but uh, maybe that's uh, a place to to leave it for tonight. Well, I think the finance committee would be happy happy to hear that one hundred and thirty thousand dollars is coming off of um, yeah prospective budget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the proposal included the. Uh, the remainder for this camp ambulance and the employee separation costs. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think that. Yeah. Because those are the things that they're not technically otherwise. Cap. Right. Right. And they, they would otherwise probably be associated with 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 the operating budget. So. Right. Yeah. That they're they're one time expenses. They, yeah. They're still, yeah. They're both one time expenses. They're just not mm -hmm. capital one time expenses. But yeah. it, but it would reduce the the operating budget by those mm -hmm. those amounts, which I think is. Uh, okay. And, and we'd be adding back in, I guess, twelve thousand dollars towards the police. If we take the sixty thousand off of right, the tape of money, that one. Right. put twelve thousand back into the rate, the general budget for the contract. Right. Did that include anything with um, the surveillance system? No, the surveillance was. Uh, uh, oh, we, we did. I did not include the surveillance. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that got bold or. We'll put it on the back burner because of right, limited time facility for it. Yeah. What I also remember from last time was that um, uh, rather than putting in a more expensive system now, put in something that is uh, cheaper and maybe faster and easier to put in, but something that we wouldn't feel so sad about losing should we. Uh, be doing something big with the garage there, or the we tear station. down that building, or, the, or the it fall down. If it if it falls down or, or something, then we're we're not going to mourn right. the loss of the camera, but have something because there is yeah there are people doing dumping. But they're much less expensive. Yeah, there lower, are low level systems. There are lower cost systems available. that. Yeah. Um, well, they'll have all the advantages of being lower cost. Yeah, <laughs> and all the disadvantages too, but. For a temporary thing that, that made sense. But part of those, so so we meant something, even something um, more more basic. Yeah. Um, Lastly, if it's if it's for the transfer station, there's probably um, RDP funds, so there's probably grant funds that could be used for that. Okay. Um, in terms of if it's going to view any of the sort of the not the transfer station in terms of areas of the highway garage or something like that. We would still need a source of funds to to, to pay whatever it right. is that we're gonna right, and we would need to know what are, how much it is so that we can identify where those could come. No, but I think if if we're talking about something that's substantially less than twelve thousand, I'm sure we can find find that someplace either in transfer station money or grant. Yeah, well, it, <clears throat> right. If it, if it covers the transfer station, then, right. then it's clear that the probably most likely the RDP funds could do that, but yeah. okay. they couldn't use. RDP money to say for the view of the back of the highway garage or something like that. Unless people, that's a dumping site for people. But that's related to the transfer station. Yeah, we could mm -hmm. double check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Anyway. But either way, I don't think we need to commit twelve thousand dollars to no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so if that can be a tentative. Right. That's what you're suggesting, Joyce, is that it's yeah. a tentative sort of. That it's a tentative thing. And, um, okay. 
Will you check in with our running by our pals at the finance Our pals. That's the word I was gonna use. Okay. Great. So are we done on this item, do you think? Okay, good. Yep. Um, we have a, another. This this uh, item was can, online. Can I get back with just one quick thing? Okay, and that is recommending this would preclude doing anything about the generator for the water system. But they're not case. ready. The, the I, know, the, I, 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 I just want to get that on the right. Right, way. right. I yeah, they're they're not really ready okay. um, on that. But, uh, they, but, they, but they they, they came in for request. And I just want to say we discussed right. it, and we've got next year. Right, right. So and they'll probably be ready next year. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Great. Well, we had this on our last uh, meeting agenda to set the date for the annual town meeting, which um, I think we made and voted for May 23rd, 2023. Um, and we want to maybe consider two weeks earlier than that. But, um, yeah. Um, Possibly in, and this is this is my fault, and I'll blame my phone, but it's but it's true. Um, <laughs> the moderator did call me on on the seventeenth, and I never have notification. I didn't get any voicemail, so it was pointed out that I had to refresh my screen. <laughs> um, so I did not get the email until this afternoon. Um, so I need to follow up with uh, the planning board because they're working on some zoning amendments. Um, CPC should be okay. Um, I believe they're going to have their public hearing, so I'm not sure that we can really take any action until I can hear from from the planning board. Okay, I know they're they're expecting a uh, um, a submission from the from a property owner for some rezoning, um, and they also I know they're also working on the floodplain um, floodplain bylaw. Um, so oh, okay. we'll, we'll have to double check with them as to make sure that their public hearing dates line up with okay with that. But to, just so people know, we're thinking about May 9th, yep. uh, which is two weeks earlier than the date we uh, voted on last time. And this is you know, to help make our moderator's life easier um, and avoid a potential conflict for him. Brian, at one point you mentioned the possibility of needing a special town meeting to pick up the bills. Yep. Is there time to squeeze that in between now and a May 9th annual town meeting? Yeah, I, I figured likely <clears throat> if we're going to have a special town meeting, I would recommend it if we didn't at the end of April. Um, yeah, there's, I think, I, I know two past due invoices, I think. Um, and also, if we're going to move money around in terms of making it available for the scan the ambulance, I would recommend we do that at the special as well so that we. Don't confuse everybody. Sure it's in place. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it will be a very quick special town meeting, especially if there's three sort of housekeeping articles or any. I can't think of anything else to add yeah, to that. Okay. All right. So this will be on our next meeting agenda, and we'll hopefully hear back that the planning board is. Yeah, it's okay. And That's hopefully, okay. I can confirm internally with everybody before that. Okay. All right. Okay, great. Um, all right, on to new business 737. Great. Um, first, to discuss and vote to appoint Amy Lavalley. Did I say that right? Is that the right way to say it? Lavalley? Uh, to the position of interim town clerk until the next annual election. Uh, is there any discussion? I'll say we do it. I'll say we do it. That sounds like a motion and a second. Yes. Okay, it's yes. been moved and seconded to appoint Amy Lavalley to the position of interim town clerk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Congratulations, Amy. And, and based on the answer I got before, I just want to make clear to Amy or anyone else who might want to run for the position, they will have to run two years in a row. One year for the unexpired term, and then the next uh, year for the full the term. Year. Yeah, and if you don't run the next time, Fred's going to be mad at you. <laughs> Might have to explain something. Then it'll line up, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, discuss request from the highway superintendent for 
with the select board to declare a winter roads emergency to allow deficit spending for winter roads accounts. That seems yeah. self-explanatory. Yeah. yeah, at this point in time, uh, the last heavy wet storms we had put me over the over the edge, so to speak, as far as my budget. Um, we're going to be short. Uh, I don't have all my invoices yet, but somewhere in the by the time I finish doing payroll, which takes us all the way to into the beginning, first week of April, I'll be somewhere in the five to seven thousand range. Short. Okay. I don't. Know, I think it was about one hundred and forty was the beginning balance. Okay. So percentage wise, it's not a great amount. It's less and than five percent. Correct. In some years. In the most recent years, we haven't had any issues. Um, yeah. While at the same point in time, salt has jumped mm -hmm. huge. Just, you know, this this winter season with salt has been a huge increase as far as cost per ton versus previous years. Hmm. Inflation. Okay. Um, so we need to vote to declare a winter roads emergency. I move to declare a winter roads emergency. And I second. Oh, okay. I have moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, good. Good. We have a winter roads emergency. Mm -hmm. Time to freak out. Time to freak <laughs> out. Uh, okay, next item, which I put a circle on because Brian mentioned it earlier. Uh, to discuss a request from Representative Natalie Blay to identify budget priorities for the upcoming state budget. And here, not just the state should give more money to schools in general, she's looking for specific things that our town would be looking for. Earmarks. 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 Oh, earmarks. Okay. Or I don't think we call them earmarks. Oh, I don't, yeah. It's a bad word. I think it's a bad word, but. I think local, local projects, local, local projects, and <laughs> I wrote down money to find a new well. Yep. Or if that's not the right term for it, but to explore a second wellhead. Um, the current sound with the with the current aquifer. I think that was a um, that was a brainwave. Um, is this uh, something that we've seen previously? Or? I'm just, I'm just going. Wow, that's fast to make um, a decision. Or but like the, that. No, the, the turnaround was really quick. It was really fast. Okay. Um, and actually, well, I actually got an extension by a couple. I days. know, but yeah, I saw that. <laughs> um, yeah. I, mm -hmm. it, if I know, suggest another thing, and that is. The study for the culvert on Christian Lane, oh. in case we don't get the increased grant to to do that, that that hundred and twenty four thousand we took off of the CLFR. Yeah, yeah, and one of the reasons, like the hundred and twenty four thousand, that wasn't there some doubt as to whether it's going to be the real cost as well, or was that just that's an estimate? That's an estimate. Okay. That, yeah, yeah, that's a. It's a proposal from yeah. it's a proposal cost from okay. time on to So another possibility that's uh, that somebody... no idea if we'll get the, that the grant that was supposed oh, to pay for it extended to cover the oh so we did we got a grant to pay for it. It's not enough to pay for it. Right, because the, it, it, because it, it, pay, it paid for it paid for the initial for a survey which told us oh. that there was no footing there. So we need to go yeah. down deeper to yes. figure out how to support that call. Yeah. And that's well, if that means asking for 124 k is there a is there a price tag on the like what are we allowed to ask for? I, I know when you ask for more, the chances that you don't get it go up. But I don't. This is this is so far down in the decimal places on yeah. the on the state budget. I'm not convinced it would that that's the way I should be thinking. You've got two separate. Which are you, you're talk, not talking about the bridge. No, we're talking right. about so the culvert. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, for those listening, there's a culvert on Christian Lane that's on the east side of five and ten. And there's a bridge on Christian Lane that's on the west side of five and ten. And there are two different projects about, I mean, culverts are just tiny bridges, right? One's a real, one's an actual bridge, one's a culvert that, uh, oh, so. Except they're still very expensive. To right. Yeah, to Even small bridges are, are expensive, thing. right? Um, it's, it's the engineering aspect of it. It's the engineering. It's, it's so frustrating because stone culvert that was put in was just put in on top of the existing materials. But no engineer will put a stamp on anything of that nature in this day and age. This day and age. So yeah. consequently, it's it's an expense, an exponential amount of money to design it, and it's going to be even more unbelievable to construct it. And we're going to be, you know, well over a million dollars for this culvert. I'm sure. Whoa. Uh, it's maybe not, but it is. They they want bedrock and it, it's not it's a swamp it's it's not likely to happen yeah. it's right on top of our water yeah. aquifer we're having to deal with those constraints right um, so I, I don't know how many other culverts do we have in the swamp could we put a well in there <laughs> we could put a well in there and pump some of that water out. Well, okay, all right. So, I'm glad I'm not in charge. You're, you should all be we, glad I'm not in charge of the water department or the highway department. Do we potentially have some money for the culvert, though, or is that? It's a competitive grant that we're going to pull down. Hopefully, you'll authorize at the end of this. Oh, at the yeah. end of the uh, new business. But, um, right. I would say we definitely grant, so. go for the uh, earmark I'm, for the, the new wellhead. I think, I, I, I don't really know, but. A wellhead sounds more important than engineering for a culvert. It sounds like that's already in some other department. We fund those things, and uh, and but so so if I were a, like a legislator, yeah, do we know uh, is it Natalie's discretion? Whose discretion is? Uh, I think it's Natalie's discretion. Yeah, has to put in projects for her district. Yeah. Okay. Well, the water the wellhead will sound really more important. Yeah, and the oh, water yeah. department has a lot of information from the engineer that did the report about what yeah. they need and yeah. what it might cost. And, and I mean, at this point, and what the regulations are that we're trying right. to meet. Yeah, at this point, I mean, it's just a, it's the form that you see that we're going to yeah. submit so, um, Yeah. So that's two, right? Two projects: the yeah. source yeah. investigation and the. Engineering, yeah, report. yeah, we should go ahead and ask for both. And I don't know, no, maybe we'll get one. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so on to uh, D discuss the FY24 personnel committee wage and COLA recommendations. Yep, um, so really, I think, I think the important ones for tonight mm -hmm. are. Um, the so I think the board has seen the uh, the recommendations from the from the original the original but uh, a previous personnel committee meeting, but there's been a, there's been a personnel committee meeting since then, um, and that was what was included in in the packet in terms of the additional memo. Um, it, it went, so the personnel committee met and, and talked about um, uh, considered uh, requests for the treasure collector. Um, treasure collector pay rate, um, fire chief pay rate, uh, uh, firefighters pay rate, pay scale, and also talked about um, and discussed the uh, uh, training stipend for uh, Lynn Sibley as the assistant treasure collector slash master trainer of everybody in that office. Yeah. Um, so what was included in the memo was, were those recommendations. Um, so a couple of those are relevant to, and actually there's the, the treasure collector is also a, another request in there. Um, but the ones that are relevant to, 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 to NAC, to fiscal year 23, um, are, um, definitely the training stipend, 
the recommendation from the personnel committee. Um, do you have it in front of you? Um, was to yeah oh I thought the same yeah you need attachments and then there's all the um, um the other things we looked at right so the recommendation so the recommendation is relevant to sort of now in in fiscal year twenty three um so the recommendation is to provide a training stipend to Lynn Sibley assistant treasurer collector to train the incoming treasurer collector for eight hours per week at um, a pay rate of $39 per hour with a stipend to be paid from March 1st, um, 2023 through June 30th, 2023. Um, my comment at the, during the personnel committee meeting was that um, if we need to find somebody to train our new treasure collector, mm -hmm. this rate of what we were, this training stipend pales in comparison to what I think we would pay. Um, if we had to bring in a third party or 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 yeah. a consultant to, to to train that person, so um, that's yeah. the recommendation from the from the personnel committee that that would need to be acted upon by the by the select board. And say acted upon, we mean we say we agree with that. We, right, this would be a, to the decision of the select board because it's it's a fiscal year twenty twenty three. Um, oh, okay. So that's specifically the uh, it's not one of the numbers of the table. It's the uh, right because um, yeah. oh yeah, I'm sorry. That was, right. I was just I was just focusing on fiscal year 24 there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So it's not a number that's in here. If I remember it from the meeting, um, so can we? Um, well, I don't, we probably don't have a number for what's the total. Um, or maybe that's what you're just trying to sort out right now. Um, I did somewhere. Um, it would be. 9,600. That's what 18 weeks times eight hours, 44 times 39. So that would be $5,616. So in the fiscal year 23 budget, um, yeah, um, that was not budget. budgeted. That it, it is budgeted. Oh, it is budgeted. Um, okay. it, was, it was budgeted for time or overlap for training. Oh, okay. Of the, uh, our intent was to, have the, was to have the treasure collector overlap. For a period of time, uh, oh, for that period of time, so that money is in the budget. It's in the so we so it's, oh, isn't that anything? Yeah. It is good, and then that we <laughs> forethought on Lynn's part, yes, and we and we have to approve it because it's it's being used for exactly what it was appropriated for. Yeah, we we don't we don't necessarily have a pay rate of for it. We don't necessarily have a training stipend oh, pay okay. rate that exists. Okay, in the town, so oh, okay. Well, you'd be approving. Then we'd be approving pay rate pay, and pay the, rate, and the eight same. hours per week from March first to January. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I'll I'll try moving this. I move that we uh, concur, approve the uh, recommendation of the personnel committee, which uh, was to uh, pay the stipend. There we go. To Lynn Sibley uh, to be training the incoming treasurer collector for eight hours a week at $39 an hour with a stipend uh, paid back to March 1st and going through June 30th. Uh, we expect that to be a total of about $5,616. Oh, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, very good.
uh, and oh, I guess that's not the and that's that's the thing we have to vote on. But uh, do we need to discuss the anything else that's in here? It blurs around because I was like, and that the personal committee too, it always blurs what we talked about at the slide board and what we want. Yeah. yeah. So so then so then the, the um with the treasure clerk to pay the so the select board had appointed uh, Amy as, as a new treasure collector, and there was a request from Amy to consider a, a pay adjustment. Yeah. Um, that would have been retroactive to um, March 1st, I believe is. Yeah, March 1st is going to be in uh, um, So that was, so that was, like, Amy submitted a request to the personnel committee um, and, and requested um, that the pay for the position be increased at $34 an hour, which is currently $29.36. So that that was the first part of the request. The second and that was requested to be retroactive to March first. Correct. Yep. Um, uh, the sort of the second part of that was to increase the the weekly hours from uh, thirty hours to thirty three hours, so that there would be uh, more coverage in the office. Um, there was a discussion about um, Amy had a request in terms of plaintiffs. So under the personnel, so there's sort of like four issues here. Um, there was a, a request for a determination as to what constitute what constitutes sort of or what qualifies for uh, length of service because that is relevant to uh, leave time. Um, and really, the issue was Amy um, has worked as the elected um, town clerk um, for the past few, how many years? Year and a half. Year and a half. Um, so if that time is if Time working as an elected employee counts under the four length of service, then Amy would have five years as of July. And she'd be entitled to more, you know, that vacation time. But if not, then um, then Amy wouldn't qualify for that that, that five year vacation time. And the recommendation of the, the recommendation of the personnel committee was that um, that length of service, at least in this case, for the town clerk is. You know more than more than more time. time. You know yeah. um, that it, that it should be included. So, um, and then there was, um, and that's one that we would you would want our us to also approve that. All three of those would, yeah. Okay, let's approve that one. Right. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say what the outcome of someone else's vote would be, um, but I would move that we allow. Are uh, in this case uh, aiming to keep that time served, so to speak, uh, when we're when um, determining benefits like uh, time on vacation. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Two out of three, or maybe there's four. Well, okay. That was one, right? That was, that was one. one. That was one out of four. One. Oh, one out of four. Oh, I thought we only three. Okay. Um, and then the other one is Amy had a request to um, oh, back. I uh, to alter the hours in the evening. But let's do that one after, Amy. Can talk about that, that one a little bit. Let's do the let's do the pay rate. Okay. And and uh, and I having been on the personnel committee, she made good arguments, um, and uh, especially regarding the duties of the of the treasure collectors in the towns we use for comps, that the duties were much, much more like those who were on the higher end than on the lower end. On the lower end, there were lots of duties that our treasure collector do that the other towns don't. So it was that was all laid out in a nice letter. And um, and so she, she made it a, a really good argument. And that's why the first time we voted for it, in my opinion. OK. So, I've been doing all the motions. Does anybody else want to I move we approve the personal committee's recommendation on the hourly wage of the treasurer collector? I second. Okay. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, it's increased the weekly hours from 30 hours per week to 33 hours per week. I that move was the third that one. we. I move that we change. Uh, 
the weekly it. hours of the treasurer and collector position as outlined in the letter submitted by a trader from 30 hours to 33 hours a week and uh, omitting Monday evening hours. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, three. Yeah, so I missed the last part of, of, of that. Amy, do you want to just talk about the evening? Sure. What's your, what's your um, in there? So, for as long as I know, the previous treasure collector offered evening hours until 7 p.m. on Monday nights. Um, I worked as the assistant treasurer collector with Lynn for probably a year and a half, and we haven't had anyone um utilize the evening hours. I mean oh. we do get the occasional 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. but no one from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And um, after discussing it with Lynn, who obviously has a lot more knowledge than I do of people put traffic in those evening hours, she also noted that there is a significant decrease since COVID that people are paying online or using the Dropbox. Um, and the, the, the foot traffic is just not there for those evening hours. Um, and right now I'm alone in those evening hours. Um, and uh, I do. Yeah. Um, so I, I would, if, if, if there does seem to be a need in the future for maybe even five to six during when tax bills are due or whatever I can do to accommodate when those due dates are, maybe the week before, I am more than willing to adjust it to make it work for the town people. Um, but I, I do feel that there's times yeah. where, you know, it's nice to get caught up, but the foot traffic's just not there. Um, uh -huh. the it's just not utilized by the taxpayers. That sounds reasonable to me. Then if we adopt the new hours. I second. Yeah. I didn't realize that was a pause. I thought it was a huh? period. <laughs> Could be either. <laughs> all right. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, man. Is there anything else on? Um, 8D. <laughs> the COLA, we didn't actually talk about the COLA recommendation, which is already, which is one of the things written down on the title here. Yeah. I, I guess it was discussions with the finance committee. Yeah. Um, yeah that I, happened I a little bit that. last week. That was real pretty. Um, so I don't know that we need to discuss it, but I just want to. Yeah. They have it on here. And there's two other additional recommendations that relate to that 524 okay. and those surround the fire department. One was to, and I don't think these need to be initially voted on because I think they affect that by 24. So there's probably a conversation when the pine is going to be work. Yeah. Um, one relates to the fire chief um, moving from a, a stipend of $10,200 to an hourly. Uh, uh, so it's a stipend plus hourly rate when you know when yeah. they when they respond to calls to a flat salary of thirty one thousand four hundred dollars then there's a proposal to really put, uh, implement uh, a pay differential between the different positions in the fire department um with um the lieutenant being plus one so this is above and beyond the, the typical firefighter pay lieutenant plus one Dollar per hour captain plus two dollars per hour and deputy chief plus three dollars per hour for when they are um, responding to calls and when they would if it could be paid. So those are um, things that need to be discussed. I think with the finance yeah. committee. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, just wanted to put that out there. Yeah. Because the fire chief, those things were not going to take place until twenty the next fiscal year. Right. Except for, I don't know he's got like three weeks. A couple of weeks in June that are technically part of this year, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but that uh, probably is going to get addressed tonight. <laughs> okay, so that one we don't have to go on. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's see. Well, the corn bonds. All right, so I think we're up to the seasonal alcohol license for Hong Kong. Yep. Okay. So each year, um, I'm just going to repeat what Joyce said. Hong Kong has a seasonal alcohol license, and um, we don't renew it as part of the annual, you know, as part of the annual process. Um, 
I have heard, um, well, not just left, but I, I haven't heard of any issues with how they, yeah, right. Their, um, there, so. okay. I move to approve the seasonal well on Horn Farms. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that'll be somewhere for us to sign soon. Oh. May have it now. You may have it right now. Want to keep talking? I can cut it. Used to. You know, oh. you know, we used to like send things across the table and sign them. I don't think COVID stopped all that. COVID stopped all that. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Well, you can sign it afterwards then. Okay. Okay. They're all in the same means you can look to skip when it's just. Oh, All right. going on. Next item is to reappoint Rick Adam Deck as the animal inspector. Um, the only animal inspector I ever ever known. You know, I'd be shocked if we had another one. Um, I just want to reappoint Rick Adam Deck as the animal inspector. I second that. Are those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, great. And then last item under new business to approve to submit. A CRMA grant application to fund the final design of the Christian Lane culvert. Yeah, um, that's what we've been talking like, about. And so voting voting no would be you don't we don't want to ask for free money. Mm -hmm. I think I again the that. vote is going to. I mean, that was, is there any reason to not do this? I don't see any reason not to. The only question I have is funding request here is fifty seven thousand. That's so that's last year's. I need to. Oh, that's like okay. Okay. That, oh, what's it going to okay. be this year? 124. Well, okay. That, that, I just saw that number. Yeah, yeah. I need to go back through and, and in the next it. three days go up and go back in and update it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I'm sure. Uh, 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 that I move we uh, uh, vote to approve submitting this grant application to fund the final design for Christian Lane Culbert. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, liaison updates. I don't have any liaison updates. I do not either. Uh, yeah. Highway department, we had one meeting today with someone who may be doing the, you know, wants to do the feasibility study. We've got another interview on Thursday. I don't know. Is there a third schedule? No, Time Bond wanted us to meet with the People that we're meeting with Thursday. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so it's not so things are moving along. Yeah, right. It was. I think it was very useful. Yeah, very useful conversation today. So. Great. Okay, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now, um, administrator updates. Abel Road reconstruction project. Uh, you want to let me into the? Um, somebody's in the waiting room. Um, so, in the road reconstruction project, there was the Franklin County Transportation Planning Organization, the EPO meeting today, where they reviewed the draft, the transportation improvement plan, and the, the Haven Road project has been moved to fiscal year, uh, federal fiscal year 2026. Um, they seem to be okay with that. So, the TPO was different, represent, different representatives from the region and mass and everybody seemed to be in agreement that that was, that was okay. It doesn't seem like it's going to screw up the plan too much. They seem to have some loops of projects around, so everything that seems like it's gonna fit and it's gonna be approved. So um okay. that's good. That's good news. Um I think in the end it'll it'll it's the right it's the right approach, I think, in the end to to not rush it, um, but not jeopardize our funding. So um that's I think that's good. Is there any movement on the land swap? Um not at this point. I haven't heard back from the letter that I sent to the um, um, to the property owner there. Um, water district. So this is water district sale of land. Um, so Nicholas Jones called me uh, last week and asked if I would just um, sort of throw out there that the water district is is wants to start the process of selling the land. They have um, they have somebody interested in it, but he just wanted to oh, sort okay. of give the the town the last you know where we're selling the land and if they really really wanted it to speak up now oh, okay. um but i don't should we have another piece of town owned land that we don't know what to do with yeah yeah 
Where is the land currently? That's well, it's got to be in that center of town. Area. Right. Sure. Where is it currently? <laughs> I understand that the water department has no interest in that. Okay. Okay. In that. Uh, well. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Nicholas. Um, MMA legislative breakfast. I went to that on Friday. Oh, how was um, it? It was. Um, well, the breakfast was no. I didn't have anything to eat. <laughs> um, it was. It was useful. Um, just. Sort of the MMA legislative priorities in terms of um, addressing education. It, it, a lot of it has to do with education funding. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, one of the updates that I did find out was that the supplemental budget that um, was passed by both the House and the Senate, which included the remote, essentially the remote meeting language. I know as of Friday, it was on the governor's desk to sign that. Uh -huh. I, I don't, I haven't read anything that it has passed, uh -huh. um, but I think the expectation is that it will. Okay. Um, so that will allow the chair to be, um, to be able to address the issue that yeah. I'm concerned about. Um, complete streets project, that's, we're still trying to get that out the bid. We're trying to do some, um, um, we do some, some tweaks and some uh, cost alternatives in terms of uh, the projects and to be able to get that out a bit in the format that we do, and we're we're using Percog to help us get that um, that project bid. Uh, cannabis establishment updates: uh, We learned that Waitley Mustang, um, which, uh -huh. which was which had proposed to uh, grow cannabis at the corner of Christian Lane and State Road, on, uh, tier whatever eleven. Tier 100,000 square feet. Um, yeah, I thought it was like tier 111. Yeah. They were really... um, that project is no longer moving forward. Um, so that is another project that we signed most community agreements for that, that couldn't get it couldn't going. Get up to that. Um, Highway Garage Feasibility Study. Uh, Fred mentioned that we met with uh, somebody from, uh, represented from Weston Sampson uh, today. It was a good discussion about sort of really the next steps that we need to do. To, to move that forward, and we're expecting um, it's written scope of work and cost estimates. We we're promised by the end of the week, so um, we'll have more information on that. And we also have that meeting on Thursday. Um, Egypt Road Water Loop Engineering Plans. Um, we, we don't hear much about that, um, but that's still it's it's moving forward. There's not a lot of public input or anything that you know that's gonna yeah. that's gonna happen with that. So um, the engineers are, are moving forward with that. Um, and it was something that, that's included on, on the water department's capital plan. Um, okay. So um, we did receive, in terms of um, the neighbor complaints at um, related to 71 Chestnut Lane Road, um, we did oh, yeah. receive a letter from MassDOT indicating that they are going to look into um, the issues that, that the neighbors are concerned about in terms of whether that whether that whether the, the fill and debris you know that's being brought up to that that site should be um so there's some movement there um yeah and hopefully that can and hopefully that can be resolved yeah um yeah and we gotta thank natalie for that everywhere else we looked like stone walls and then somehow natalie got through with somebody and things have started um, yeah so we started getting responses from people at dot so. yeah I feel like there's something else I'm supposed to mention, but it's. Uh, uh, oh, it's after eight. I'm pretty I sure it's our brain is starting to. Turn. It's empty. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. Uh, oh, um, new town administrator, uh, assistant town administrator, not new town. Oh. Yes. Oh, is that yeah. process moving forward? Um, we don't have any any candidates that's moving forward currently. Oh, okay. Um. At this point, um, and then one of the things that we need to address, and I'm glad you brought that up, actually, is that um, with Amy moving to the uh, town clerk position, the admin assistant position will now be uh, oh, vacant, and I'll be alone myself. So um, answer your own phone. Yeah, they're not too far away. <laughs> I get hassled less. <laughs> um, Okay. So that's something that we'll have to we'll have to advertise for. Okay. Um, 
All right, but it doesn't obviously need to be tonight. So um any potential won't uh, totally you know leave us okay. while we um go through the process of building that position. But um that's something that if you're okay with that, I want to I think we should have plenty of that as soon as we can. Um, yeah. And and on the and on the assistant town administrator, that one, you know. Yeah, that's an important one too. But I mean, I know, I know without the assistant town administrator, you have more on your plate. So that's yes. Yeah. Okay. It, oh, so RFP, the, oh. the so RFP has been released, has been published. Um, so um, the way it works is that if anybody wants a copy of it, they should email me at townadmin at waitley.org. Um, because I need to keep a list of about our beholders so that if there's amendments to the art, there's amendments to the art, then, then they can get sent to everybody. If it's just posted oh, yeah. on the website, then I don't know who to send it to. And oh, I and there's issues. The with, email that you sent us that did not have the RFP on it. That is just a notice. The notice. It's okay. essentially a notice that said con contact you. Contact me. Okay. Okay. Good. Because um, I did email that out to some some people who I who know a lot of contractors. Yeah, I got a lot of response because I had to advertise it in in the, the way that yeah. the state requires and the central register and we got a lot I got a lot of emails back but they're all sort of not local larger energy right. type companies yeah. um and, and so um okay. if we have any ideas if we have any ideas about companies um uh, please send it out and we'll see what okay comes back so all righty I promise that's it <laughs> okay all right very good then um Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good night, everybody.